For more on the spread of the dangerous respiratory virus, we're joined by Katherine Jacobson. She's an infectious disease specialist and an associate professor at George Mason University. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Um, we're you know, hearing about a new case, possibly two new cases in Thailand. More recently, a few days ago, a case in Germany. How contagious is MERS? MERS isn't as contagious as people might fear that it is based on what we're seeing in South Korea. There have been cases in travelers occurring over the past two or three years. We had a case here in the U.S. about a year ago of a traveler. That person didn't spark a local epidemic here in the United States. So it's unlikely that this case in Thailand or the other cases in travelers is going to lead to a situation like we're seeing in South Korea. Because we're seeing a lot of the disinfection uh, in all sorts of places. Um, most of the spreading, though, is taking place in hospitals, from what we can tell. And we've heard of a, a few nurses who contracted MERS in South Korea. What does this say about preparedness in health facilities and in places where you'd think South Korea would, mm -hmm. would be pretty first rate? So what, one of the things that seems to be happening in South Korea is there are a lot of visitors who come into the hospital. So pretty much everybody who's gotten sick in South Korea had an exposure at a hospital facility. There is no evidence of community-based spread happening. So one of the things that needs to happen is to restrict visitors. And we understand that culturally there are expectations that people will visit those who are in hospitals, but that's going to have to stop potentially for a time. Now, one thing that we do need to keep in mind in Korea is that nearly everyone who's died had an underlying health condition. So maybe chronic kidney disease or chronic heart disease. So people who are otherwise healthy, even if they contract MERS, are, it seems, really unlikely to die from it. Now, that doesn't mean we don't want to stop it from spreading, but the level of fear that we're seeing outside of the hospital setting is, is not necessary, and that's probably damaging. What's the mortality rate for someone with MERS who is otherwise healthy, doesn't have an underlying condition, compared to what we saw with Ebola, and I know it's completely different, uh, what we saw with Ebola last year. What's the mortality rate? We don't really know yet. So part of what's happening with the case count for MERS is that because South Korean officials are looking for MERS cases, they're finding them. Some of the people that have tested positive weren't even really that sick. So if there was an active case detection going on, they never would have been counted. So the current case fatality rate, the percent of people we know who have had MERS who have died, is really high. But as we're doing more tests and we find people who are mildly ill or maybe have no symptoms at all, we're going to see that case fatality rate drop a lot. Catherine, would you say that there is as much research and development on MERS compared to what we saw with Ebola? Well, we didn't actually have enough research on Ebola. Uh, we didn't have a vaccine ready. We still don't have one that's available. So this is not necessarily a very good comparison. But MERS is something we only discovered for the first time in 2012. So we've only had three years to be able to do research on it, and there have been relatively few cases. One of the advantages of a really bad situation when we have an outbreak is that that leads to more research. So we're seeing that with the new test coming out of China now that will really enhance our ability to do screening, especially of travelers who are coming in. If a traveler has a fever, there's now this rapid test that can help to screen for it. So that'll certainly help with containment efforts. What is the virus that people need to keep an eye on? We've been talking about MERS, but is there something else out there right now that we should be keeping track? As an epidemiologist, uh, you could ask any epidemiologist in the world, we'll probably say influenza. Flu is always mutating, and we never know when it's going to mutate in a different direction. So we're watching some strains of highly pathogenic avian influenza, so bird flus that could become people flus. Uh, but we're, we're often uh, surprised. One good thing with MERS is that it doesn't appear to be mutating very fast. That was the same thing with Ebola. We didn't see a really rapid mutation. And so once we have a vaccine or a diagnostic test, we hope it'll work for a long time, where for flu, we have to have that new vaccine every year because it mutates so quickly. We'll have to bring you back for the flu. Catherine Jacobson, thank you so much.